Now, in the last video, we looked at how we could work with functions in Go. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can start to create more complex composite objects using a concept called struct. Cool. So let's dive into the code and try and define a new struct that is going to store information about an engineer, for example. So I'm going to start off with the type keyword. I'm going to call the struct engineer, followed by the struct keyword. And then I'm going to open up curly braces. Now within the body of these curly braces, we can define the fields that we want to store within our engineer struct. And I'm going to start off with name, which will be of type string. Cool. So we've defined the struct. How do we now instantiate one? Well, let's open up the main function here and let's create a new struct. We'll call it engineer. We can then say engineer like so. We can pass in the name, colon, and we'll say Elliot. And then we'll do FMT print line engineer like so. Let's try and run this. Go run main.go within the terminal. And as you can see, it's printed out the struct with the values within the struct, which in this case is just Elliot for the name. Now, just a quick tip. If you want to see the field names as well as the values, we can use a format string. So we can change this to print F. We can use percentage plus V and then a new line character. And then we can pass in the struct that we want to print out. And then let's run this again. So go run main.go. And we should receive more verbose output, which gives us the name of the field as well as the value, which is more helpful when you're working with more complex struct objects. Now, just to note, this approach that we've used to instantiate the struct is the verbose approach. We can also use the more succinct approach, like so, and that will still work as expected. And we can pass in additional fields if we had them, uh, like so. So if we had age, we could define age as type int, and that would work as well. However, I tend to go for the more verbose approach um, when I'm writing production applications, as it gives us that added clarity and helps to make the code more readable and maintainable going forward. Now, in this example, we've just added the age field, which is of type int, to our engineer struct. However, it should be noted that if you don't pass this in when you're defining or instantiating a struct, any of the fields that you haven't specified will be zero valued. So keep that in mind. Okay, so the struct that we have defined here is fairly flat, but say we wanted to add a more complex object underneath it, and that captured the projects or project that an engineer is currently working upon. How would we go about that? Now, I'm going to encourage you to pause the video for a minute and try and implement some form of substruct within this engineer object that would help you to capture a project. And then once you're happy, we'll move on and I can show you exactly how you would do that. Cool, so now that you've attempted that yourself, let's see how we'd implement that in practice. Well, let's say we wanted to capture the project that an engineer was currently working upon. The first thing I'd want to do is define the name of the field. So I would say project, and then I would say this is going to be of type project. Now this is currently undefined. So what I would then do is define another project struct underneath it. And within this, I would define the fields that I'd want to associate to a project. So the project name, uh, we could do something like the priority. So. or we could use something like the technologies. Uh, so technologies, which could be a slice of type string. Cool, so we've been able to effectively define a nested struct within our engineer object that captures the current project that they're working on. And that project captures the name, the priority, and some of the technologies that the project uses. So this could be things like the language, uh, any broker technologies or, you know, whatever. So now that we've defined that this nested struct of type project, let's have a look at how we would populate this within the engineer object we've created within our main function. 
So to keep things nice and tidy, I'm going to create a new line. I'm now going to fill in the age, which is 27 and not 28. And then I'm going to define the project, which is a struct of type project. The name is going to be beginner's guide to go. To go. The priority for this is high. And the technologies we use are going to be a slice of type string. And I'm going to pass in just go into here. Next, we want to ensure that there are commas at the end of each new line here. And let's attempt to run this within the terminal. So go run main.go. And as you can see, this has printed out all of the field names and values. So we've got name Elliot age 27. We've got the project nested struct being printed out. And you can see within this, we have name, beginner's guide to go, priority high, and technologies go. Now, what happens if we want to print out a given field? Well, we could do so like this. We could do the name of the struct and then the field name that we want to print out. So let's say name, for example. We could then try and run this in the terminal. So go run main.go. As you can see, it's printed out earlier. If we wanted to print out the nested field of the project name that I'm currently working on, then we could do project name we could then do go run main.go and as you can see beginners guide to go cool cool so that's all we're going to cover in this video now just to recap we've looked at how we can instantiate or define structs within go and we've looked at how we can do more complex tasks such as defining nested structs so in this case we've defined an engineer with a nested struct type of project that has the fields name, priority, and technologies.